Hey guys, Justine here from Compass Maths Tutoring. So today we're going to be looking at the topic or rather the skill of graphing a region corresponding to an inequation. Now this is something that you learn in probably late year 10 or early year 11 um, through the early year 11 course. But the reason I'm bringing that up today is because I find that many students who are currently sitting in the HSC, some students of my own that I teach, I find that they tend to forget this skill by the time they get to year 12 and learn some of the year 12 content. So I'm bringing it up today to sort of refresh the minds of the HSC students, but also I guess um, for some prelim students who are currently learning this topic. So I'm just gonna go through the three steps to follow through when answering a question like this. Um, and then we'll look at a few questions, year 11 style, but also HSE style. So the first step is the boundary. So it's graphing the boundary. So you wanna replace the inequality symbol with an equal symbol. And then you simply graph the curve. So this forms the boundary of your region. The next step is checking the boundary. I guess this is related to the first step, but um, this, uh, this allows you to see whether your boundary, the line of your boundary is broken or unbroken. So if your inequality has a symbol like this, if your inequality has like a greater than or equal to symbol, or it has like a less than or equal to. So at the moment it has that equal to symbol at the bottom of the inequality sign. It means that the line you draw is unbroken. So it's like a solid line. However, if there is no equal sign, so it's just something like greater than or less than, then your boundary is broken. And finally we move on to shading. So this is the step in which you shade the region, which, um, or you shade the part of the plane, in which, is which is included. So you only shade the included. You obviously don't shade the excluded part. Um, so to, to find which part of the curve is included and which is excluded, you simply test one or more points that don't lie on the curve. It's important that you test a point that isn't on the curve or isn't on the boundary. And then you substitute it into the left-hand side and the right-hand side of your original in equation. Um, so I'll go through how to do this exactly. And that enables you to see which area to shade. Um, so it's usually you want to test an easy point. I mean, really you can test any point so long that it doesn't lie on the boundary. But the easiest point to test is usually the origin. However, if the curve does pass through the origin, then you can't test the origin. So the next easiest point to test would be um, a point on the axes. So like something on the x-axis or the y-axis. Um, and then finally, these are some symbols that can be included in this topic. So this U stands for union. So this basically means to shade all the regions described by each inequation in the question. So sometimes a question can have maybe like two or three in equations listed. And so you've got to graph each of those equations and shade the regions. Um, so when you see the sign union, it means shade all the regions for each specific in equation. On the other hand, this sort of upside down U means the intersection. So what that means is, even if you have a list of say three in equations, you still graph each in equation, but you only shade the region that is common to all the in equations. So the union means you shade all regions regardless of, regardless of whether it is common, whereas the intersection means you shade all regions. All right, let's move on to a question. So we'll start with something pretty easy, I guess. So it says sketch the region of x squared plus y squared is greater than 25. So this is a circle. So I'm just going to draw up a set of axes. Okay, so before I draw in my circle, I'm just going to have a look at my in equation symbol. Um, so see how there's just um, a greater than sign. There's no equal sign underneath it like that. So that means my boundary line is broken. It's not a solid line. So it'll look something like this. Yeah, now, please forgive me for that horrible drawing of a circle. But this is a circle centered at zero, zero with radius five. So you can see my boundary is not a solid line, but rather a broken line because of the in equation here. And so the final step is shading the region. So is the region inside the circle or is the region outside the circle? So you have to test a point. So we're going to test. Now, the easiest point to test, we said, was zero, zero. And since the curve does not pass through that point, 
we can test it. So we're going to test for the 0 0.00. So we're going to sub that into this equation here. So x is 0 and y is 0. So we get 0 squared plus 0 squared is greater than 25. So we get 0 is greater than 25. Now, you have to see, is that true or is that false? 0 is greater than 25 is false. So this means that the point zero zero is not part of the shaded region because it is false. So it means we don't shade inside, but rather we shade the outside region because zero zero was false. If zero zero was true, then we would shade the region that includes the point zero zero. But since it is false, we include the region that doesn't include the point zero zero. So we're going to look at another question. So this is a question that involves two regions. Um, so we're going to graph, we're going to follow through the same steps. So we graph them and we shade the regions. Um, but we have to look at this word here. It says end. So end is another word which means intersection or rather this symbol here. So this symbol means to shade the intersection or rather the region that's common to both of these in equations. So the first step is always the same. So you want to graph each in equation. So the first curve is y equals a half x plus one. So this is a straight line. So this has a y intercept of one. So when you sub in x equals zero, you get one. So it's y intercept is one and it's x intercept. So we're going to sub in zero into y for the x intercept, zero equals a half x plus one. We bring the one over, so we get a half x equals negative one, so x equals negative two. So it has an x intercept of negative two. And then we simply draw the line. Now we have a look at the inequation symbol again. There is no equal sign that goes along with that, with that sign, which means that the line is not a bold line, but rather a dotted line. So this is the line y, equals a half x plus one. And the reason it is dotted is because there's no equal sign. So next, we're going to graph the next inequation. So y equals, I'm just in a different color, y equals negative x, negative two. So the y-intercept is negative two, so it's down here. And the x-intercept, when we sub in y equals zero, we get zero equals negative x minus two. So we get x equals negative two. So it's going to be this point here. Now, if you have a look at the sign, there is an equal sign this time. So it means it's going to be a bold line. Okay, so now that we've drawn our two, um, our two curves, we need to shade or we need to find which area we're shading. So we're going to take our first in equation here and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to test for a point. So if this, so this curve here is here. So we can see it obviously doesn't pass through zero, zero. So we're going to test for zero, zero. So we're going to test for this one. Y is greater than a half X plus one. So we're going to test zero, zero. So we get zero is greater than a half of zero plus one. So when we uh, simplify that, we get a zero is greater than one because zero, half times zero is zero, zero plus one is one. So zero is greater than one. We know that that's obviously false. So this means that we must shade the region that does not include the point zero, zero. So if this is our line here, this region includes the point zero, zero. So the region we're gonna shade is the other region outside the point zero, zero. And the next we consider our, uh, our other equation. So y is less than or equal to negative x minus two. And we're gonna test for the same point because once again, this curve does not, through, does not pass through the point zero, zero. So we test zero, zero. So we get zero is less than or equal to negative zero minus two. So zero is less than or equal to negative two. So this is also false because zero is greater than negative two. So once again, we want to show the region that does not include zero, zero. So this, so we're looking at this curve now. So this region includes zero, zero. So we want to show the other region. I just showed it in blue. So we're looking at this region for this inequality. 
Um, and then finally, the question wants us to only shade the region that's common to both inequalities. So it's basically where the two regions overlap and you can see it's over here. So I'm just gonna shade that in purple. So in our answer, we, we should only have this region shaded. So we just have to erase the blue and the green. All right, and then finally, we're gonna just look at um, how this topic can come up in the HSC. Um, so this is a question um, with finding the area of an enclosed region. And the way that they describe this region is through a set of three inequalities. Um, but really the same concept follows. You still wanna graph each of these inequalities and then shade only the common region and using calculus, you find the area. But the main idea I included this, the main reason I included this was because you, it uses that um, in equations to describe the area. So we're gonna follow through with the same steps. So we're gonna graph the curve. We're gonna graph each in equation. Okay, so the first thing is this. Y equals four X minus X squared. So this is a parabola. So I'm gonna factorize it, take out the X, I get four minus X. And so my two X intercepts are zero and four. So zero, zero and four. Um, and this is gonna be a concave down parabola because the coefficient of X squared is negative. So I guess I'll just do it in red. Um, and the sign does have a negative, it does have an equal sign, sorry. The in equation does have an equal sign, which means it's gonna be a bold line. So the curve is gonna look a little something like this. So the next equation is y equals four minus x. So this is just a straight line. So the y-intercept is four. And the x-intercept is also four. Um, and the sign does have an equal sign, so it's gonna be a bold line. Okay, so those are our two equations so far. And then finally, we have the equation, I guess it's probably the easiest one. We have y equals zero. So y equals zero just lies right on the x-axis. So it's a bold line. Now, I know that's not a very straight line, but you get the gist of it. So now it's time to shade the regions. So. For each of these curves, we're gonna test for a point so we can see which region um, we're going to shade for each in equation, and then we're gonna find the common region. So we're gonna start with the parabola. So we're going to, we're gonna test for a point. Now, if you look closely, the parabola passes through the origin, so we cannot test for the origin. So instead, we're gonna test for another point. And so the next easiest point we said was a point on the axes. So I'm just gonna test for this point here. I'm gonna test for one, zero. So X equals one and Y equals zero. So I test one, zero. So I'm gonna sub it into this parabola here. So on the left-hand side, I get zero is less than or equal to four lots of X, which is one minus X squared. So it's zero is less than or equal to four minus one, which is three. So zero is less than or equal to three is true. So that means this point is going to be included in the shaded region. So it's gonna be this region over here, all of this region within the boundary. Okay, next we're gonna look at our straight line. Now for our straight line, um, we can test for the point zero, zero because that line does not pass through. So we're going to test zero, zero. So subbing it into the left-hand side, we get zero is less than or equal to four minus zero. So zero is less than or equal to four. So that is also true. So we're going to shade this region, which includes the point zero, zero. And then finally, we're gonna test for the last, the last equation. So the equation is y is greater than or equal to zero. So there is really no need to test for this point because you're either gonna shade above or below the line um, because this is quite a simple curve. So y is greater than or equal to zero means that you're shading above the line. So it's gonna be all of this region over here. And now it's time to, um, I guess, shade the common region. It can't go past this point because of the line y equals zero. And it can't go past the parabola because it's within the parabola. And it can't go past this line, which means the common region 
is this region over here in orange. So the common region is the orange region. Um, and then finally, the question asks to find the area. Um, now, this is not really relevant to the topic that we're discussing now, um, but I will work through the solution and I'll show you anyway. So I've just drawn the curve again on a new page and I've reshaded that um, the area of interest. Now to find the area using calculus, we do need to split this into two areas. So to find the point in which we need to split it, we need to find the point of intersection between the parabola and the straight line. So I get x equals one and x equals four. So we know x equals four is the point here, but we're interested in this point here, which is point x equals one. So I'm gonna split this region down x equals one. So to find the area, going to be the integral between one and zero, um, but this one's gonna be for the parabola. So four x minus x squared dx plus the region bound between four and one. Um, and this time it's bound by the curve or the straight line, sorry. So it's gonna be four minus x dx. Then we work through that and we get a solution. Okay, so once you work through that calculus, you should get an answer of 37 over six units squared. So that defines, or that's the area of this region here. So there we go. That concludes this lesson on shading inequalities. I hope that helps.